All righty, folks. Uh, I think I don't, I mean, Heather said my name. I'm Pastor Mark. I'm one of the pastors here. If you don't know who I am, we are in week three of our series called The End of Myself. We're talking about realizing that if we want to be a part of the body of Christ, if we want to be a part of the church of God, then that means that we need to come to the end of ourselves and realizing that it's his way and no other way. I always like to start my messages with a question. So how many of you like to receive a gift? Raise your hand if you like receiving a gift. It's your birthday or Christmas or whatever. Now, how many of you like to be the people to give a gift? Raise your hand for the people that like to give gifts. Now, we all recognize that there sometimes, I think Heather raised her hand for both, that there are sometimes where we like both of those things, but there are some people that are one or the other. We believe that through what we would call love languages, that God has even wired some of us to experience love in a greater measure because of someone giving us a gift, the love language of receiving gifts. I feel extra love because you went out of your way to get me something. I was reading an article this week from the American uh, Psychological Association uh, talking about the psychology of gift giving and gift receiving. And they were saying that there is an actual chemical response to us receiving a gift, and that both receiving and giving have similar reactions within our bodies. That as I give a gift and as I receive a gift, there is something in my brain chemically that says, hey, this is a good thing. Now, there's some people that are like, because of that, I'm going to have an entire month for my birthday. It's my birthday month, not just my birthday. And then there are some people where it's like, oh, I just like my happy doses of gifting in little chunks here and there. We like to receive, we like to give, because it shows other people and it shows us if we receive a gift that that person cares about us that they went out of their way to give us something that they believed that we would like. And so our message today, the title is, My Gift for You. Because we're going to be talking about spiritual gifts. What are the gifts that God has given us, and what are we going to do about them? In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, the Apostle Paul says, Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. Which means it's possible for us to be uninformed. When we first say yes to Jesus, as we hear about his life, his death, his resurrection, we're not always immediately told, and, and by the way, you've now been given a gift. You have now been empowered by the Holy Spirit indwelling inside of you to do something more than what you could do on your own. And so if these, are some, if these gifts are things that we could be uninformed about, and if the Apostle Paul thought that it was important enough to talk about, then I think we should too. So we need to know what the gifts are, and we need to know what is their purpose. And so we're going to start by looking at the gift giver. Because looking at him is more important than the actual gifts that we're going to talk about. Because if we miss who gave us the gifts, if we miss who it is and his desire for these things, then the gifts don't matter. And the great thing about God is he loves to give gifts. In James chapter 1, verse 17, it says, Every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. It is he that desires to give these things. He doesn't offload that responsibility to angel number 375. He says, I give the good gifts. I desire to give these things to you. And some of these gifts, eternal life, Romans 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ephesians 2.8 says that we have been saved through faith, saved by grace through faith, and this is not of ourselves, it is a gift of God. So grace, faith, salvation, all of these things, a gift. 
not something we have to earn, not, not something that if I was a really bo- good boy this year, that on my birthday God's going to give me this present freely given by our good God. And Hebrews 2.4 tells us that in the gospel, as God reveals the gospel and, and who he is and how we can receive salvation, Hebrews tells us God also testified to the gospel by signs, wonders, and various miracles and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Sometimes we miss this one. We miss that God giving us spiritual gifts is to back up the gospel so that as we live our lives, as we do the things that God has called us to do with the giftings he has given us, people say, I know that God is real. People say that the gospel must be real because that person did something that only God could do. So the first point I want to make this morning, and it's really smart, you guys, God's gifts are good. God's gifts are good. Have you ever received a lame gift? (laughs) Sorry, Grandma, socks just aren't going to cut it this year. I was really hoping for something good. We believe that God does not give lame gifts. There was conflict within the early church because they believed that some gifts were better than other gifts. There are times in our lives when we see someone operating in some other gift, and we wish we had that too. But God does not give lame gifts. God's gifts are good. So every single gift that he tells us he gives, we receive it with thanksgiving. We receive it with excitement. Because the gifts of God go beyond any human gift. These gifts that we talk about, when we talk about some things that are natural to us, encouragement, serving. I I can move a chair from here to there all day. But how is it a spiritual gift? How is it something that is unlocked within me by the power of the Holy Spirit? Because if the gifts are good, because the gift giver is good, then I need to learn how to use them well. And that's all great, but what are these gifts? 1 Peter chapter 4, starting in verse 10, says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so Peter tells us, if you go to the next slide, I kind of color coordinated some stuff that jumped out to me, is that we use our gifts to serve other people. The title of our message is My Gift for You. The, The thing about gifts is it would be really uncomfortable for me if I received a gift for my birthday that was for somebody else. Hey, here, here's a brand new car. Go and give it to Heather. I, I, it's my birthday. I, I thought this one was for me. But it's different. That would be very unfortunate in the church if that's all it was. Yeah. But in the church, God has given me a gift to share with you, and he's given you a gift to share with me. And so as I give my car away to Pastor Heather, she hopefully has something even better for me. And so God gives us these gifts, what? To serve others. Not not even just to help, to serve, to take myself at a humble place and recognize that my gift is for your benefit. As faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms, Sometimes when we talk about grace, we think about it in just this ethereal mist of God's grace saves me. Okay, that's cool, but, but how, I, I need something tangible. I need something that helps me understand God's grace. And so spiritual gifts are to us God's grace in a tangible way. That we see how much God loves us, Because I see you operating the gift that he's given to bless the rest of us. That is God's grace in a tangible form. The the word grace 
actually comes, we, we have our word in English, charisma, comes from the Greek for charis, grace. That these gifts of grace are exactly that. They, the, the spiritual gifts are literally gifts of grace from God. And so he, the Apostle Peter divides the gifts just into two easy categories for us. Talking and doing. If anyone speaks, they should do it as if they speak the very words of God. And there's a lot of spiritual gifts that have to do with opening our mouths. And so Peter says, hey, if you believe that you have a gift that has to do with opening your mouth, make sure you steward that well because you speak on behalf of God. That if you are speaking in tongues, prophecy, encouragement, all of these things, be careful how you use your words. Because people are going to look at you and wonder if you speak on God's behalf. And on the other hand, if anyone serves, a catch-all term for the doers, if anyone is a doer, they should do so with the strength God provides. And I think we all nod our heads and say, yeah, got it. But in my life, when I was a kid, I'm like, boom, I got the gift of service. I can set chairs up all day as a middle school student. I can help out in the kids' ministry. I can do all of the things. But as I got older, I was asking myself, have I gotten to the point where I'm actually doing it out of God's strength and not my own? Because more often than not, I can do all of these things just fine on my own. I, I am totally fine setting up and tearing down and doing stuff all on my own strength. So what takes it to the next level where it's only through the strength that God provides? Because I think that a lot of us, when we get to that point, we say, well, I'm done serving. I, I, I gave everything that was me, and I'm done. Yeah. And we haven't even gotten to the point of operating out of our gift, to do so with the strength God provides. And that doesn't mean we are burning the candle at both ends and we're burning ourselves out. But are we asking ourselves questions, is this my strength or is this God's strength? For the purpose of that in all things God may be praised. So that everything that happens, everything that is done with my hands or comes out of my mouth brings praise to God. Romans chapter 12 Verses 3 through 8, the Apostle Paul says, For by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not have all the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, oh, I lost my spot. Um, if it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. And so the Apostle Paul shows us that there is a connection between faith and grace. And so he tells us that as we come together as the church, as we come to our end of ourselves and come with our gifts, we do so first with sober judgment and then in accordance with the faith that God has distributed to each of us. What, what does that mean? God has distributed different levels of faith to all of us. Some of us in this room have more levels of faith than other people because that is what God willed. And I don't get to tell you who's got more, who's got less, or why. There's just this unction within us that is how far we're willing to go to trust God. How far we are willing to believe everything that he has said. And we'll go on and we'll make the argument that we can ask for more of these things. But at least at this starting point, we use these gifts 
to the level of faith that we have. On the next slide, that we are told that we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Once again, these gifts are gifts of grace. And because God desires his grace to be spread out in different ways through different people for his purposes, we have different gifts according to God saying yes to you, no to you, yes to you, no to you in all kinds of different ways. And so Paul tells us, for some people you got the gift of prophesying and prophesy in accordance with your faith. You've known some people that have felt they've had a word from God and can confidently declare, I believe this is from the Lord, because their faith says so. And you have some people who say, I don't know where this came from. Maybe it's going to be useful to you. Maybe it's from God. I don't know. Here you go. In accordance with their faith. But you notice that both of those people were faithful to the word that God gave them. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. And, and you notice we, we dropped off that in, in accordance with your faith. The idea is we're slapping that to the end of every single one of these verses. It's just Paul didn't want to take the time to write that after every single gift that he lists. So if it's, lead, if it's to lead, do it diligently in accordance to your faith. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully in accordance with your faith. And I know that last one is hard for me sometimes. If I can show mercy, but I'm not sure if sometimes it's always with a smile on my face. But to show mercy cheerfully. What what, what would it be like if every court case, the, the person receives mercy from the judge, and the judge is standing up on top of his desk, hooting and hollering and saying, Woo, we're showing mercy today. We would all be a little taken off but I believe that that is the mercy that God shows to us. God cheerfully shows mercy to us despite everything that we do. And so if he can do that, and if he has given us a gift of mercy, then we are called to do that too. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. And so all of these things that he lists in accordance with your faith for the benefit of other people. Last section for this point, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 7 through 11. Sorry if I'm blowing through all of these. It's just there's a lot to talk about when it comes to spiritual gifts. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith, by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing, by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of the one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. So from all of these passages, as we pull them all together, the point I want to make is I have been given spiritual gifts for your good. I have been given spiritual gifts for your good. So in this Corinthians passage, to each the manifestation is given what? For the common good. Common. All of us together. Now, not the spiritual gifts are given for the elite, not the spiritual gifts are given just for the poor, for all of us together. And notice that even on those two spectrums of how we like to classify people, gifts are given to everybody freely. It's not one person or another. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved, receive the Holy Spirit, and receive gifts. And so to some, a message of wisdom This is how the Lord is speaking on how you should operate in this life. To another, a message of knowledge. To others, faith, healing, miraculous powers, prophecy, discernment between spirits, speaking in tongues, 
which can be either speaking another language of this earth, or we might say also a heavenly language. And the interpretation of tongues, because if y'all speaking something I don't understand, we kind of need someone here to tell us what we're saying. And he gives all of these things just as he determines. It's not some heavenly slot machine. It's not Jesus standing there at a dartboard saying, Scott gets this one today. No, God has determined these things, a choice. So I have been given all of these spiritual gifts for your good. Whatever my gifts may be are not for me. The gifts that I have are not for my good. Your gifts are for my good. And my gifts are for your good. But it's not just enough to have these gifts. We need to use them as well. 1 Corinthians 14, starting in verse 26, Paul says, What then shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together, each of you has a hymn, or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. If anyone speaks in a tongue, two, or at most, three should speak one at a time, and someone must interpret. If there is no interpreter, the speaker should keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and to God. Two or three prophets should speak, and the others should weigh carefully what is said. And if a revelation comes to someone who is sitting down, the first speaker should stop. For you all can prophesy in turn so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. The spirit of prophets are subject to the control of prophets. For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. So Paul is speaking to the Corinthian church. who, was ha- who They were having a problem with specifically the gift of tongues, but just spiritual gifts in general. But one thing that the people of Corinth understood is they understood their gifts. And so Paul says, as you all show up to your weekly gatherings, make sure that there is order and structure as you all are operating in your gifts so that all the prophecy people show up and I feel like I'm receiving a word from the Lord and fill in the blank. And all of the tongue speakers are showing up, and they're ready to start going. And they're like, hey, I'm going to start speaking, but oh wait, Sally isn't here today, and she usually interprets tongues, so I'm going to hold off till next week until Sally's here. They not only knew their gifts, but they knew the gifts of other people in their church as well. Sometimes in our church, we don't even know our own gifts, and we don't know the gifts of other people in our church. And the Corinthian church, Paul had to give them instructions because they were trying to do the stuff. How many of churches in America, how many times do we, our church, fail to operate in our gifts because we just don't know? And this is why it's important for us to talk about these things. Imagine if we had the problem that the Corinthian church had. Sorry, everybody, we have too many people that want to prophesy. We have too many people that want to teach others about God. We have too many people that want to speak in tongues. We have too many people that want to encourage one another. Our church services were going too long because people wanted to do what God put on their heart. What would that be like, church? And so that is the direction that I hope that we can go. That we not only know our own gifts, but we know the gifts of other people and so that we can use those gifts for all of our good. And on the flip side of all this positive excitement of what could be, there is reality. 1 Timothy 4.14, the Apostle Paul encourages his friend Timothy, do not neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. And later on in 2 Timothy Paul says to Timothy, For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. The truth is, we have these gifts, but we can neglect them. 
We can put them in a nice box. We can say, this is my gift from God. And we can go and stick it over in the corner and never touch it again. God did not give us these gifts for us. He gave it for other people. So I need to go and I need to grab that gift box. I need to open it up again. And I need to bring it with me wherever I go. Because it is not a gift for me. And so Paul told Timothy, don't neglect the gift. And then later on, he told him to fan it into flame. Does that mean that he did neglect the gift? Or was it that Paul just recognized it needed a little extra oomph? But either way, Paul explains to us through his letter to Timothy, even though we neglect it, we can bring it back again. We can fan it into flame. What does that take? It takes breathing oxygen onto it. It takes repetitive motion, practice, we might say. It takes bringing something that is just a smoldering ember into a flame. And that is something that is within our control. We don't need to say, God took this from me. We need to say, how am I going to start operating in it and bringing it back? And one note of encouragement, Romans 11.29 says, For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. He doesn't take that stuff back. And so if his gifts and his call are irrevocable, that means I go and I find it and I use it. And so what is... Oh, I'm uh, skipping all the way to the end. Third point, using my gift requires discipline. It's something that requires time. Because if I'm not taking time to work on my gift, if I'm not disciplined, it's not going to be fanned into flame. It's not going to be something that I'm operating in. I'm going to be operating in my own strength and not the strength that God gives me. So when I come to the end of myself, I recognize that these gifts are not for me. So what is my next step? For some of us, the next step is, I have never said yes to Jesus. I have not surrendered myself to him. And so what you're talking about, all these spiritual gifts, I don't get it. And that's okay to not get it, because it's only through the Holy Spirit that you can get it. There, there's no spiritual gifts test for someone who does not have the Spirit of God. So I encourage you to say yes to Jesus today. For others of us, we've done that but we don't know what our gift is. Lucky for you, we have planned right after this service a spiritual gift seminar where we're going to go through a test and we're going to talk about what could my gift be. And I'll explain that more when we do that during our fellowship time. And for others of us, we need to use our gift. And when I say gift, for some of us it might be singular, for some of us it might be plural. Some of us have multiple gifts. Some of us have one gift that we're really good at. But we need to exercise all these things that we believe God has given from us. I'm going to pray, but I'd like to invite uh, the worship team to come to the forward. And Heather is, or sorry, Scott is going to be praying over communion today. So if you'll join me in praying. Jesus, we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, Jesus, for your gifts. Because these gifts are from you, and they're good. And so, Jesus, help us to come to the end of ourselves. Help us to realize that it's not all about me. Help us, Jesus, to come with hearts of humbleness and submission so that everyone else might be lifted up, so that we might have unity in this place that we have never seen before. And so, Jesus, we surrender ourselves to you this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.